So welcome to today's session of Inspire Students to Use Their Voice Through Seesaw. My name is Kelly Mitch. I am one of the EdTech and Design Coordinators, and I am here with my colleague, Rocio Valdez. And so we are excited about having you here today um, for our session. So just know that we will give you the sign-in link towards the end of our session today. Um, but um, we are gonna be probably fast and furious through this session. So we are gonna have to cut down a little bit about what we had and um, try to get through all of it, okay? So if you have questions at any time, please feel free to um, ask us and we are here to support. So let's get started. So a little bit about us. Um, again, our department here in SAISD is to help with future ready, you know, getting students up and going, um, really harnessing those um, five or four C's, depending on what you're looking at and stuff. Um, but that critical thinking, that creativity, collaboration, and communication. And we are here to support you in that. So, with today's um, focus for our seesaw lesson or seesaw session, um, we really started thinking about how does it connect to TTES, and we know that things need to be relevant for teachers to really embrace what it has. So, I want you to keep in mind for your TTES for seesaw is the activities that you start to develop for your students. Again, we're wanting to have those activities that can be. Um, challenging for the students who have some critical thinking with them. And with that, we always want our T-tests to, um, you know, move from that teacher-centered to student-centered, because again, that's what us as teachers are evaluated on. And why not, as we're developing these uh, digital activities, also keep that in mind, okay? So that was our connection that we thought of for T-test. So today, what we're gonna do, is our learning objectives is we're gonna learn how to utilize Seesaw to empower students to use their voice in learning. And we kind of broken it up into two parts, the integration of Seesaw into instructional routines, and then the multimedia tools um, and checking and understanding that. We wanna to try to give some interaction, but again, with our session being um, shortened, we may not have as much hands-on in building, okay? So I'm gonna tell you that up front, um, you know, we're gonna to try to give you an opportunity to do a little bit of build, but I have a feeling we're not gonna to get to a lot of it, okay? So um, if you have other questions after today, know that you can contact our Office um, of Educational Technology in Extended Learning here in SAISD and, um, I know Rocio is going to be gone after tomorrow, but myself and um, several of the other coordinators, we will be on contract. So if you're playing throughout the summer and you have some questions and you're not quite sure, give us a call or you can email us. Um, we're always here to support. I know as a teacher, you know, yes, we're supposed to have summer off and I would take a couple days, you know, a couple weeks off, but then I would you know, get ready to start coming back and I start dabbling what I wanted to plan for my um, upcoming year. So if that, if you are similar to me, then again, don't feel um, bad about reaching out to others to um, help with support. All right. So with that said, we're going to jump into our learn section of Seesaw. But before I get started, how many of you um, are Seesaw users? If you could just put into the chat for me, that um, you have used Seesaw before. And it's just a simple yes or no in the chat, whether or not you've used Seesaw, because I'm trying to figure out if I've got uh, new users or if I have um, current users. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, Patty, you have not used uh, Seesaw, so okay, great. Natalie, you haven't either. Okay, excellent. See, this is this helps me. So if I already am identifying things, I'll know, oh, wait a minute, I have to give a little bit more instruction. So perfect. This is what I need. Thank you, Tom and Velma, for letting me know. And hopefully, Tom and Velma, if I forget something, jump in the chat, share with um, our friends here of, you know, what I may have forgotten a step and stuff. So, so a little bit of background for SAISD. 
we have purchased a uh, seesaw for pre-K through second grade. So all pre-K and second through second grade students have access to seesaw and so do our teachers. Now, just a um, little heads up for our teachers here in the district that um, our data has paused. So you still will see your previous students. So if you're building activities this summer, just know that they'll be housed currently in your current class and not in your new class yet, okay? But maybe you'll go through and find some other ones that you know you're gonna um, favorite so that way you have access to them for uh, when you do get your data, okay? So I'm gonna go out of full screen, or before I do that. Um, so one of the things about Seesaw is we really wanna empower our users. And our main users are our students. So with that, we wanna have effective integration of technology does not simply replace hands-on learning. It makes new learning possible. And with that, again, we need to think about how do we you know, have that blended learning and balance between digital and non-digital. And even I come with an early childhood background in elementary, I primarily taught um, kinder through fifth. Um, and I understand that hands-on and that the students still have to have that tangible pieces. I mean, I used to love um, when we did basic math counting, when I taught kindergarten, you know, still having the, you know, the M&Ms and then, you know, being able to have that physical sorting. But now we're bringing in technology. So know that there is a balance of when to use that tech and when not. And, you know, it's not going to replace certain things that we do in the classroom that really need to be that hands-on. And I love this quote that Rocio added, because again, it's, it's just giving new learning opportunities to our students. Rocio, you want to add anything? Uh, you're absolutely, um, am I okay? Okay, you're absolutely right, Kelly. Uh, this is a tool that adds on to the classroom routines that we have in our classrooms. I mean, uh, you have the hands-on, but this is just another way to um, uh, for students to showcase the, their learning and for teachers to actually have a, an easy access to what the students have produced. Yes, it's just a great way of adding something in for our students. And even our littlest learners, they are little whizzes at technology because they have started with technology. Oops, okay. So before I jump into this, because we have some new users, um, I am gonna pull up my Seesaw real quick. Now, for those of us in SAISD, we have our Seesaw linked through our class link, okay? So Patty, being that you are um, from a different district, I'm not sure how your connection is. Know that if your district has not purchased Seesaw, you can get a free version of Seesaw. That was one of the big things with Seesaw is you still have the free version that you can utilize. And even though, um, Patty, it looks like your middle school, it says in your title, um, you could have digital portfolios with your students, even at the middle school level. So if that is something you're looking to do and you don't have it by your district, you could go to Seesaw and open a free account. The thing is, is you will be limited on what all your capabilities are. Okay, so here in SAISD, we go through our class link to get to Seesaw. Now, for those of you who are our early childhood users and have iPads, okay, and in our district, again, pre-K through second, primarily have iPads. There are a couple different campuses that have moved uh, kinder through second to Chromebooks, but one of the pieces that we have learned currently is that we have to bypass class link for our students and go straight to the Seesaw app on an iPad, okay? So just know that you may have to go straight into Seesaw via the Seesaw app on an iPad. That is what we have learned in our district, okay? Questions so far? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into our slideshow and 
against uh, Rocio and I are going to tag team this. So we're, oops, I keep hitting the buttons. So in our first part is setting those routines with Seesaw. So one of the pieces that we encourage you to do to be able to empower the students to have their voice throughout the activities that you're wanting them to do and create is setting a routine. And setting a routine is gonna be important right off the bat, as soon as we get our students, so that way they know that structure that's gonna work for you and it's gonna be manageable throughout the process. So, okay. And then some of the tools that we're gonna be able to use in those routines are photos and videos, microphones and voices, pens and labels, all of these amazing tools that will be at our students' fingertips. So when we think about empowering student voice, I want you to think about allowing them to be creative, allowing them to be critical thinkers, to see what's happening in the classroom, what you're learning, all of those kind of components that they can um, go and be able to um, do. Oh, Natalie, you're coming down. Um, okay, so yes, we will be creating your class and it will be up and going. Um, not till probably August 1st, because again, we put a pause on our data um, so we can close it out and then we have to finish uh, bringing it up. So you don't have to create an account. What you can do is if you will, I'll put my email address and I can see if we can by chance, I can't guarantee anything, if we can get you um, your account created manually for the district. Uh, because I know if you go out and create a free account, it won't sync with the district, okay? But we can see what we can do. Again, no promises, <laughs> but I can um, talk with our person who manages um, the accounts, okay? We can see what we can do. All right, so again, those multi-mold tools that we can utilize are great to empower our students' voices. And I love seeing some of the photos that students come up with. So setting those routines, um, you know, we have those opportunities to use Seesaw in whole group practice, independent and in centers and stations. And that's what I love about um, Seesaw is that we have an opportunity to use it in multifacets. We can utilize it, you know, at different times, different opportunities in our learning environment. Rocio, feel free to jump in <laughs> if I'm missing anything. Oh. Yeah, hold on. Oh, let me find the right file. So as she's preparing to share, any thoughts on Seesaw, Velma, or Tom, any insights of, you know, what you thought in the past when you used it? Okay, again, can everybody see my screen? Thumbs up, excellent. Um, as Kelly shared, uh, CISO can be used for uh, whole group practices, independent practice, center, or stations. So we're going to go through some examples of each one of, the, of these routines. Uh, routine one, as a whole group. Um, we can use CISO as instructional videos to kick off a lesson uh, and then document class experiences. For example, in this activity, the teacher will place on CISO a video uh, that will um, uh, showcase the beginning of a lesson. She will show the whole class this lesson and it's uh, very easy to just grab a video and put it here. Another way will be like actually the teacher creating her own video using all the tools like images, labels, shapes, and more to give instructions to the students. One thing that I use that I find that very beneficial is when teachers can actually record their voice with every instruction that they provide. 
uh, CISO makes it very easy for you to do that. So students at different levels can actually access the, the, the information, the lesson itself, and the instructions, and then they can um, uh, uh, complete the activity. As an independent practice, uh, the teacher can use this as a teach the mini lesson, then assign the activity, and the teacher can simply circulate uh, um, throughout the classroom, uh, supporting the students uh, uh, throughout the activity. That's as an independent practice. Now, this is one of my favorites with, okay, for example, the students can be using the microphone photo tools to explain and reflect on what they're actually doing hands-on as we can see in this activity. Uh, in this uh, example, for example, they were, yeah, they were uh, learning about insects. They created their insect using clay they took a picture with the CISO camera, which is very easy to do. And then they use the tools to label the, uh, the parts of the insect. What the teacher gets is the completed um, activity made by the student. And, um, they, and, and as a teacher, you understand if they grasp the concept or not. Before you go now, on. Rocio, yes. I want to say one thing about that. Again, both this picture and the one previous, as you can see, she did some blended learning, which is a big piece for here in SAISD is again, you gave that opportunity for hands on, and then you brought in your digital tools. Love these examples. Thank you for sharing them. Exactly. And thank you. Thank you for um, uh, letting me uh, know that I need to go a little slower so we can. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the next one. And actually this is my favorite way of using uh, CISO as centers. Uh, the teacher teaches a mini lesson, plan centers uh, according to the learning that they're gonna do that day or that week, and then designate CISO as one of the centers. Once there's a fluidity in the classroom of, of using CISO for uh, different things, then uh, students get very used to and familiar of using CISO as one of the centers. And it's very engaging and you don't have to, um, they, don't, they don't require a lot of your attention to proceed. For example, here is another a, a really good example of blending. They're, they're learning expanded notation. They're doing it hands-on. They're working at their desks. They're, they're showing what, they're, what they know. So what comes next? Technology. They grab their iPad. They take a picture on CISO. They uh, explain orally what they have learned and you get it as part of their portfolio. Same thing here is another example in writing. They have created this, uh, this activity. They have uh, um, done their writing. Now they're getting their, um, their uh, CISO and uh, simply adding to their portfolio through voice and video. And this is another example in science. They're tracking what's happening to plants and plant seeds. Uh, again, using the tools which are very, very easy for them to do. So they can, let me play this a little bit. I don't, I don't think so if sand is going to grow. I, so if you haven't taken I your think picture, you take it now. Gonna grow. Gonna grow. I think so. Okay. This is just another example of how they can record scientific observations that are happening in the classroom. So with all three of your examples so far, Rocio, again, you've brought it in the blended learning and the piece of empowering the student voice because whether it was the math, the writing, or the science experiment, you're also bringing in that record aspect for students, which again, we want to hear their thinking instead of me as the teacher um, implying what they think and what they're doing. So having them utilize that voice. And that's one of the great things about Seesaw is that you have that opportunity to have each of your students record 
and tell their thinking of what they're doing. And just like in this one, you can see there's a microphone. So, you know, that's one of the biggest things you can have students take a photo and there's nothing wrong with them just taking a photo, but really have them think critically to explain what they did or, you know, what the impact is on what they're observing, all of those things. So think differently about what would I be asking my students? And then as Rocio showed earlier, those examples where the teacher is recording his or her voice in for the direction so that the students can refer back to, okay, what was the question my teacher was asking me to do? And especially with your pre-K kinder, you know, you're not going to be able to put a lot of text. You're going to have to do a lot of recording, um, that pre-recording prior to the students starting to um, understand letters and sounds and all of that. So great way of showing that independent work along with in centers and stations. I mean, even at the middle school level, uh, Patty, you could utilize this with um, stations and then having the students have to record their findings, whether it's in math or if it's in social studies and things. Um, it looks like we have a question. Ms. Razago, go ahead and ask, you can unmute. Um, yes, I have a question. I I use Seesaw a lot and um, I created a lot of my slides or my assignments, but um, like looking at this slide in particular, I really love it, but are these um, emojis, like does she have to go find them on the web or is it a new tool that Seesaw has? Um, are the backgrounds available now in Seesaw or is it just all made? That's an excellent question. And it's a combination of, of everything that you mentioned. Some things, uh, uh, I, I usually tend to build everything on Google slide and then transfer it to CISO. So yes, I grab some uh, transparent images, put it on my slide and then bring it to CISO. The, um, it, it provides more flexibility, but this is a good uh, moment to share something that I don't know if if you or anybody here knows, but there's a, there's a an, an extension that allows for a very easy way of grabbing images from the internet or, or, or anything you want and just placing it directly on Seesaw. So um, maybe I can. Um, Ms. Rezgo, do you have, Rezgo, sorry. Um, do you have the icons for the microphone and stuff? Because no, I, I have not. a cheat sheet for that. Oh, that would be great. Uh, I do not have that yet. Okay, then I will get that for you and I will put a link in the chat. Actually, yeah, it's at the bottom of the, the presentation. Yes. Um, but there's, well, the, 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 the extension that I was going to share is called Reflect which is uh, if, you, if you look for Reflect um, CISO, this extension allows you to copy directly from anything like, like uh, the SNP um, tool that you have in, in your computers, you can SNP directly into CISO. So it's super easy to bring anything into this uh, platform directly without having to copy, paste, save, and do all these things. You just grab it, a snippet, and paste it, paste it into CISO. Okay. Um, like we see in this image and Kelly share, uh, the instructions are simple. You have audio that makes it easy for younger uh, students to access the information and simply complete the uh, activity. Here we can have a discussion of how can you integrate CISO into one of your daily class routines. Just think of uh, one idea and perhaps you can share in the chat. Yes, feel free to either come off mute or share with us an idea how you might be able to use this in your daily routine, whether it's whole group, independent, or in centers. Maybe we've kind of started to get those uh, juices moving, or if you have a question about it, Rocio and I are here to support. Um, this is Mrs. Regoza. I would like to share how I would integrate the uh, Seesaw. I would actually use it in one of my um, daily stations. Um, and it would actually have 
them read. I have them record themselves reading, um, maybe like an easy passage and um, to, you know, check their fluency. Awesome. Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, uh, fluency, uh, it's an, uh, CISO, uh, it's an amazing tool to actually check for fluency. Uh, poetry, uh, simple things. According to the age, uh, you can just select passages and it's students can simply record. So you right away will know, are they doing, uh, how are they doing? Uh, and therefore you can modify your, your strategies in your class. Yes, excellent, excellent way of using it. Anybody else? One way I did, I created some pre-K lessons um, a year ago and it was the kids had three different choices during centers to do. And so each one of the activities was a little bit different, but they had some choice. So again, allowing students to have that opportunity to decide on what they want to do. So it was a great way of setting up some centers for them um, to complete. Yeah, and choice choice is very important also. I mean, they they get to um, more they become more invested in what they're learning. Uh, we can move on to part two, which is using CISO multimedia tools to check for understanding and enhance lessons. This right here is your best friend. Uh, CISO has now a button that says library and the library takes you directly to this area right here where you can see the community section and your library plus other things, but this is important. So now you can search for something that says check for understanding with CISO. Once you're here, you can find activities like this. Uh, these are samples for pre-K, and these are samples, the same sample of showing what you know for third through fifth. The only difference here is the, the amount of, of um, text that you have in the boxes. Here, I, I would add the, the audio to make it easier for, for this level. You can also explain your thinking, same concept, and all these you can use it, you can find it in the community section of the library. Right here, you have the audio support, the icons that explain exactly the, 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 uh, the section that they're gonna click and use for both levels. Exit tickets, same thing. You, uh, uh, it describes exactly, the instructions describe exactly the tools that you're gonna use in CISO and what the students are going to do. Audio for the lower grades, um, simple text for the upper grades. So what do you do? You go to the community. Again, uh, uh, CISO has now a button, it's, that's, it, that's brand new, a button right, on, right in, the, in the main page where it says library. Go to community and here say, uh, uh, look on the search for, for understanding. Explore the different options that it offers. And once you find something that you really like, you can click assign. So what's great about this is you know, us as teachers, we always, time is so precious to us when building activities and things. And so having the opportunity to have this library, this is a global library that we can go to and, you know, find different pieces that might fit our learning objective. Now, no, again, in here, you can modify because it may have a recording of a different teacher. It may have uh, Ms. Valdez's voice versus my voice in my class, you can always do some modifications, but look through this first. And those of you in SAISD, I know that there's another one that comes up with district library. So that's right. that have been created maybe by um, the curriculum instructional specialist maybe out there. Um, so just know that there is a plethora of lessons and activities already built that again, if since you're starting off, you know, you're like, okay, what do I do? Where might I find things? 
this is a great i love looking through the activities because there's so many creative teachers out there they do things that i was like oh didn't even think about that so always go to the activity library and you probably find anything and everything you're looking for um, but again think about what your objective is what are you trying to accomplish with your students um, and these activities have been vetted um, by CISO because uh, uh, any teacher can actually uh, suggest ideas, but CISO goes through a process of actually vetting to see if it's something um, worth for other teachers using it. So what do you do? You assign it. Once you assign it, you save it into your library. Here are the instructions, and like Kelly explained, you have audio instructions from the teacher or the person that created this activity, but you can edit it and change it and put it uh, uh, using your own voice. Once it's in your library, you can assign it to students. You can assign it to your groups, to your classrooms. In this case, this activity is assigned to these two classrooms. You can assign to individual students, you can assign to an entire classroom. So it's very flexible. You can also schedule it. So let's say if you don't want to use it today. And if you're planning this activity for next week, you just place it in the schedule and appears in their student devices, the data at the time that you decide. I love that new feature because when uh, Seesaw first came out, you didn't have that scheduling right. opportunity. And what's great about Seesaw is that it's continually evolving. I've seen some of the new uh, behind the scenes things that we can't share yet, but that they're coming. And I mean, again, they're constantly thinking about your workflow as a teacher and how to make things um smoother for you in your processes and that scheduling opportunity it's again I can build if I've got an opportunity to build several lessons but yet I don't want my students to all see them I can schedule them out love that yes so now now that you have already assigned the lesson now you can teach your lesson as you normally would when the students are ready to complete the activity they will uh, click on the activity follow the directions complete it then they will follow these directions by using the tools right here. For example, the first one is use the uh, camera tool to take a picture. And that's what they just did, took a picture of this. Then they're gonna use the microphone to, to explain what they have learned and use the uh, check mark, click on the check mark to, uh, uh, to save it. And these, uh, the next slides are showing you this process. So they're, they're using the microphone, recording their, their learning, checking to uh, send and submit the activity. And then once it's done, the teacher will be able to see it. You as a teacher can um, check, the, check what the students have done and uh, leave messages, either written messages or uh, um, record a message for the students. You can also edit, and uh, no, not edit, but actually send it back in case they haven't completed correctly. So it is extremely flexible and very easy to use. Um, Kelly have, uh, have shared the presentation. So once you get it, you can click here to explore the activities. You can save whatever you need to your library. And again, you can modify and assign to students. So for example, here, once you click the link, it will take you to the um, activity library. You can search for whatever you want, any grade level, any subject, and whatever you save will be, will go to your personal libraries. And this works, this is where it's great. Cause again, you can see on Rocio's screen, you've got that school and district, you've got community. I, I am gonna caution you briefly. The Seesaw lessons are currently free, but what I have been told by our rep for Seesaw is that those will come August, um, have a cost to them. So if you look through the Seesaw lessons that say new, 
just caution yourself on what it might look like in August. Okay. Cause I don't know quite, they just told us that there will be, um, a fee that will be attached to those. Um, yeah, so hopefully they, they will always have like uh, sections that will be, that will have a price and uh, sections that you can simply download and modify. So in this case, we're not gonna be able to build activities, but um, when we're gonna show you a couple of more examples. So um, before you do that, Rocio, does anybody have questions so far? Yes. If you've got a question, feel free to come off mute or um, write it into the chat. We just wanna make sure we know that this is a fast and furious uh, session. Again, Rocio and I had planned it for a lot longer. Yeah, a three hour hands-on session, but we couldn't do it virtually. Okay, if there's no questions then we'll continue on. Um, For example, um, we can uh, do something as simple as this, which is an activity. Again, this is this is created through Google Slides and just imported into um, Seesaw. You save the activity to share it with your students, and you can edit the activity. And the, the simple instructions is record your presentation. For example, they have already done the presentation. They just they can just take a picture and record through it. I apologize, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, this is Mrs. Regos again. Are the slides that are embedded into your presentation, are they, um, do they link back to Seesaw? So if I wanted to, you know, use a butterfly lifecycle, could I click on it and it would go to the, um, life cycle, or is it just an, an image? Uh, I think it's linked to the presentation that you can make a copy of it. Um, but if I click on that image, let's say the butterfly one, it's not linked to the actual seesaw link. It should be. Yeah. Cause mine, mine goes out to the link. You may have to possibly put it into presentation mode okay. or cause it does have the URL address in the image of that uh, Rocio has for those examples and mine is bouncing out. If it's not, let me know and I can get those links and put them into the um, chat. Okay. Right. And one more question. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, if I go now and, you know, view the new lessons and I save them in my library, will they stay there or will they come back with a cost? They they will be they will be there for you in uh, when all of your classes when your class comes in. So yes, so if you're building these activities and you're saving them into your library, when you do get your class roster and your class that's been um, generated via um, Frontline and everything, you mm -hmm. will then be able to put the items into the class and assign them. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's there's some lessons that the uh, CISO has already said that this will be free. So whatever he says is free, you have it and you can save it to the, your library. For example, right now I don't necessarily have students, but all the all the a hundred and something um, uh, activities that I have created are still in my folders, are still in my library, and I can access them anytime. So they, I guess the only way you wouldn't be able to is if you change the districts or um, that, that will be the only way that you will lose your, your, your uh, CISO. Even if you change grade levels or schools, it will be there under our district. So yes, they will be safe. So here you can explore different examples of activities that I have created. You can modify the instructions and um, save it if, that's interesting to you. Uh, this is another one. Again, you can click here to save this template uh, to your own library. And this is a simple one as character traits for second grade. What I um, did as a teacher was always explore the library, see what I like, uh, uh, save it to my library and modify with my own pictures, with my own videos, 
but, uh, but I already got the idea from the community, which saved me a lot of time. And as I kept using it, I became more proficient and became more creative. So I used it in many different ways. So to begin with, use the community library, search for your grade level for the topic that you want and, and, and learn because, um, because once you want to give, for example, explicit instructions that you need to memorize how to create these icons and all these things. But, but once you do it often, it becomes very easy. Here are more examples. And uh, I'm gonna skip this one for a second, just to let you know that here you have more resources and here you have the shortcuts to actually create your own um, icons. So when you're saying, for example, use the, use the camera, what you're going to type is use um, this right here. This is what you're gonna type for the camera to appear. So that's how it works. If you want any of these symbols, this is what you type. This is the text shortcut. And this is a great tool to have in your pocket. So again, you can quickly put in that microphone, put in the camera, you know, those different icons, because again, our pre-Kers, our, you know, kindergartners, they're, um, if they see that visual as they start to learn the application, because Seesaw may be new to them, is having those icons there. So that way they start to learn, oh, okay, I'm going to be doing a recording or I'm going to be drawing or taking a photo. Um, it just gives them an opportunity. And Seesaw has come up with this little, as I call it, my little cheat sheet, because you can copy those and then put it into when you're writing up your instructions. And then when you hit save, you'll see all of a sudden it won't have the word check. It'll actually have the green check mark there instead of my code that was there. Um, another thing I want to highlight that um, with what Rocio was saying with um, the activities and things and seeing what the library has, Seesaw has a free thing called Seesaw Ambassadors that um, also give you different resources and different opportunities to learn from each other. So know that we're gonna be um, here in SAISD, we're really gonna be encouraging um, educators to do different um, global communities, learning communities, and Seesaw is one of those. And again, the Seesaw Ambassador is one that is a great community because they share different lessons, they share what's coming, what's new. Plus, you know, if you've got questions, you've got um, others to connect with, say, hey, this isn't working in my seesaw. Do you have, you know, does anybody have any, any good ideas of how to um, solve those problems type thing? So just know that we have, you know, the C there's the seesaw ambassador community that is ran by seesaw. Yes. So I think it's time to share the attendance link. Do you have it handy or I, I can also get, grab it here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. And this way we can kind of look into, oops, what just happened? Nice. For some reason it doesn't wanna, oh, I guess because I don't have anything pulled up anymore. <laughs> So let me pull up my seesaw. Okay, so a couple of things, um, you know, again, like what Rocio was saying in her session in the images is that when I click on them, you should have this link that appears. So when I click on it, it should go and ask me, do I want it? And this is another piece that I want to highlight is that there are, um, for our dual language classes, there are um, lessons that you can find in the library that are in Spanish. But when I hit save activity, and it should pull up in my activity library. So I was gonna say, I am signed in. <laughs> yes, um, it can go ahead and save. So now in my activity, I can see I have Rocio's lesson here that I could then go and modify. So you have those opportunities within um, Seesaw to bring in those other components. Like I said, with the school district, um, you've got our district and our district SAISD has over 6,900 
lessons that are in here. Okay. And these again are from within our district. So I want to show you um, how simple it is to build an activity. So I can click on the add and I can either post student work, assign, send out an announcement. So when I'm gonna post student work, I can, you know, I get some icons that come up. And one thing that Rocio mentioned a couple of times was that she built things in Google Slides first. So just know that I can go and I can upload things, whether it's a, a PDF that I have in Google Slides, in Google, my Google Drive, I can have, you know, a couple of Google slides. I can have a photo, videos. You have those opportunities to use something that you make. Now, again, like I said, teachers are very creative. Some teachers have created things in Google slides with, you know, different backgrounds and images. And then some people have um, used like Canva and they brought that in. You just have those opportunities to um, bring in things. So if I wanted to upload something, it's a simple drop and you know, grab that file. The other thing is, is if I have something on my device, on my computer, sometimes, you know, we store things on our desktop. And so you have that option of not just going to your Google Drive, but going to your computer. And so I can go to my computer. It's going to pull up my different components here. I'm just going to grab this one and say, this is what I need it. And it will pull it in from my desktop onto my computer for my for me to continue to build my lesson. So if this is what I want, great. I can you know continue on. As you can see, it was multiple pages, so it brings in all of those pages that I needed. So, but here's the nice thing: say I just want to only have certain ones. I always have the three dots um, that are going horizontal that I can go and delete. So if you do bring in a PDF and you only want certain components, think about our math textbooks, that if we download um, the PDF for student work and we want students to work out problems and things, but I don't want them to have all of the other ones. I think about what Rocio said for whole group that we could have done one of the activities whole group, but then when the students go to centers or their independent time, I only want them to do the certain pages. So again, you have the opportunity to delete pages that you may not want when they come in as you're building the activities. Questions? Okay. She's sending a link. Um, so again, you can do that. I, as a teacher, can record my voice. So that way the students hear what the directions are. Maybe I want to take a photo. Maybe I want to, especially at the beginning of the year, as the students get to know who you are, you may want to take a photo of you. Or maybe it's, you know, you have um, a family pet and you want to show the kids what your family pet looks like or um, something that's your favorite space in the classroom as they're getting to know you. Those are some pieces that you have here. Now, what's great about the students utilizing the camera is at the beginning of the year, I like to see what kind of silly faces they might make because we know kids, they wanna be silly, they wanna explore. And I encourage you, you know, some of the first times you use Seesaw is maybe have that exploration time for them. Let them, you know, maybe type their name, maybe record their name or take a photo. So really think about how you may bring some of these components in, you know, at the beginning of the year as you're getting to know them. One of the other pieces is, yes, I brought in all of these PDF pages, but say I want to bring in a blank page. Down at the bottom, I can click add a page and it will add it. And what's nice is that this is similar to Google Slides, PowerPoint, uh, Lumio. You can move by clicking and dragging. Say I want this at the very beginning. You have those opportunities to adjust the pages. Now, if you ran out of time and you're not quite done with this, you can hit draft 
and it will save it into your library too. So know that you have to complete it all. Oh my goodness, I only have seven minutes. I don't think I'm gonna get this done. Know that you can start it, click on draft, and you can come back to it later, okay? And when I do that, it slips. My screens are all, I hit draft. Oh, I need to, I'm gonna say I'm gonna put it to my sample student and I'm gonna hit draft. And now I have set up folders. Um, so for me, folders is a good way of organizing um, my content. You don't have to have folders, but like I said, I do. So I put it in there and I hit draft and now it's saving it into my reading folder. So when I go back, I can continue to um, add to it. Questions. Um, again, I know that there's a lot in here, but one of the things with empowering, I'm gonna go back to um, the quote that Rocio put at the beginning about, you know, effective integration of technology. It makes new learning possible. Again, this is one way we can empower our students with their voice, with that blended learning, and having the opportunity to find out what they're thinking to challenge them. Because in some of our activities that we build for them, they may be challenging for our students. And that's a, that's a good thing because then they're having to problem solve throughout the activity, okay? Um, so questions, thoughts. Okay, if there are none, again, um, I'm just going to talk about what we did have some new people, some of the other components that are here within my seesaw. Um, one of the things is you have all the activities. It'll tell you which ones of your activities are assigned, scheduled, archived, and then your calendar. And again, if you need more ideas, you can browse the inbox. Now, this is actually one of the features that is coming up that's going to have a change is that you can now send announcements. And so you can send announcements to a family member, you can send announcements to students. One of the nice things about Seesaw is that you get to have that connection between your parents or the guardians of your students, and they're able to um, send you a message. They're able to only see their students work. So just know it's a communication piece and you can connect families up with the students. So if um, Amalia in this mixtures class, her parents, you know, want to have that connection, you can you will give them a specific family code that just they can get for Amalia. And then <coughs> and then the parents would only see what Amalia's work is when she turns it in to me. So just you know, have those opportunities. And then, you know, some of the announcements you might make, maybe be, don't forget no school. Um, maybe you're having um, a special day. I know when I taught uh, kinder, we would do different units. And I think about it Thanksgiving, we would have our big feast. So, you know, it might be like, don't forget, we're gonna be having our Thanksgiving feast. Um, you know, anything that's happening at the school, this is another way of connecting with our parents and guardians of our students. One of the one, new ones that um, Seesaw released last year was the progress. And I love this one. And because I don't have students, it's hard for me to see it. But what's nice about this is you can see how each student is progressing through the activities. Have they started it? Have they completed it? Have, you know, just different things, but also then I can tie it to different skills. You know, is this a mathematical um, lesson? Is it, you know, something we did in reading? Let me see if I can find anything. I don't think I can because my stuff is from back in earlier in the year. Um, Let's see if it'll let me come back. I think I had some stuff back here. Let's see. 
nope, I still can't. So, but again, you have that opportunity. And one of the nice pieces is you can always export it and it comes in very nice, colorful columns um, for you to see what's happening. But those are some of those tabs that you can have. Um, the journal is again, I can go to each of my students and see what did Amalia do? What has she, you know, started? What has she completed? Those type things. And so you can navigate through your students here and be ready to go. All right, did I answer all the questions? Okay, well, if there are no other questions, I thank you for coming. Apologize that it was fast and furious. Um, but again, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're here to support. Um, and again, Seesaw, I know, is um, having webinars throughout the summer. And again, their um, Seesaw Ambassador is something I encourage us all to join. And because, again, you get to get some sneak peeks along with, um, you know, what's happening and you can share with others and build that professional learning community. The only thing I can say about the Seesaw Ambassador is once a year, you have to do, again, it's a free refresher. And once you do that, you're good to go for another year.